Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Underground, where I uh, came up with the name of the uh, channel. As I always talked about how uh, I was thinking about the underground church that's present in present day uh, China and Iran, where Christians are persecuted and, and even killed for having a Bible. Um, still kind of dark. It's daytime, but it still looks dark in this room. They got lights on in here, but I learned the lighting situation yet. I'm not a scholar, you know, I'm just someone who likes to talk about the Bible a lot and uh, talk about God, and that's the reason why I do these uh, videos. Uh, the video I titled today, and the reason I say that is, uh, so uh, I understand I make mistakes, and that's that's part of it. My videos are, as you would say, raw. I just, I have everything up there and. uh I make mistakes, but I'm just a simple person just trying to be obedient to the Word of God in these last days and speak about God. I titled the video uh, this time, People Scared to Death. I've heard so many people I've, I've talked to, and and some are just not sure of themselves, so they don't even want to hear or even talk about it. So I, I put out the theme. I, I put out the first verse, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on, in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So that that is one of the most well-known verses in the Bible. And that just puts a light on it because I'm going to be talking about heaven. I'm going to be talking about hell. A lot of times enough people, they, they don't want to admit there's a hell or anything like that because they don't want to think God would send anybody to hell. And the fact is that... Uh, you go to hell because you don't choose God. John 3 through 20, uh, John 3, 21 through, I apologize, it starts with verse 21. Oh, it's verse 1 through 21. I apologize, I didn't write that down. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of Jews, of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these th miracles that doesn't accept God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter in the kingdom of God that is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit marvel not that I said unto thee ye must be born again the wind bloweth where it listeth, listeth and the hearest the sound thereof but cast not tell whence it come whence it cometh and whither it goeth so every one that is born of the spirit Nicodemus answered and said unto him how can these things be Jesus answered and said unto him Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and we receive our, not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe it, I tell you of heavenly things. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned, and already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh into the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are brought in God. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our salvation, and we are, we are covered by his blood sacrifice. Therefore our past, present, and future sins are covered. That doesn't mean you keep sinning. I mean, we will sin. I sin. I fail. I am man. I'm not perfect. But I'm not willingly in a sinful life. And I try my best to step away from sin 
and to be above it. When it talks about uh, the water, uh, before Jesus was Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, his cousin. But once, and at this time he's talking about Nicodemus, about being baptized. But once he became that sacrifice, it wasn't necessary. The, change, the baptism changed, and that's where a lot of people have issues with and, and have problems with. You know, they're saying you have to be baptized. For an example, I had a minister that I had a conversation with, and we disagreed. Uh, there was a man that in uh, Vincent's, Indiana, who had cancer, he's dying of cancer, and came to know Christ, an older man, before he died. And he was trying his best to be baptized. He wanted to be baptized before he died. And, and the family, believe it or not, it was a family, but some of the family members were like, it was too much trouble. They were trying to set up a, a area there in uh, Good Samaritan Hospital to uh, baptize him. And during this process, it was actually his own family was arguing and lasted about a week and a half, and then he died. And that minister said, well, that man didn't go to heaven. And I was like, how can you say that? And he was like, well... He was talked to for I talked to him for 17 years, and he accepted not. And I said he accepted him before he died. It's like well he wasn't baptized. Well it was was not necessary. The thief on the cross beside Jesus uh, was not baptized yet. Jesus said because you know me and recognize me, you'll be with me in paradise tonight. Uh, Jesus made the blood covenant but changed the old laws. Now myself I am baptized because. I accepted Christ, and as a witnessing or outward uh, submission, as you might say, I, I led myself to be baptized. But the baptism didn't save me. It was giving my life to Christ when I was a young man. I had full knowing. Even though I'm, I'm real big about some of these churches that will, I disagree with baptizing five-year-olds and eight-year-olds. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I've talked to one minister at one church that, uh, was like, well, I was I was saved at eight. And I said, really? He's like, yeah, I was baptized at eight. I was saved at eight. And I was like, do you understand as an eight-year-old that really a lot about the world and the truth? And he's argued a lot against me that, oh, I was baptized at that point. I was saved at that point. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to argue with you. I disagree with you, but uh, that's age of innocence. Age of knowing is later. Uh, someone asked me what would the age of knowing be. I wouldn't know to put an age on it because each person's mature maturity spiritually and everything is different. Uh, but I know a bar mitzvah is done around 13, 14 years old for a young Jewish boy. I know God uses Jewish people for a lot of things. The uh, for an example, you know, like the Jewish wedding is the example of the rapture of the church. The bride awaits for the uh, uh, bridegroom to come and announce, to, you know. That he was coming for her, but he cannot leave until his father tells him it's time. Why? Because they they uh, make a his father makes a uh, the father-in-law makes a special place for the son and the wife to spend time with each other. The old ways, in some ways, aren't the same anymore. But in the old ways, they would he had a spot for him, uh, place that they can ha uh, be and live because they uh, he helped take care of him for about a year then. They would do more, or a period of time may not be quite a year. I have to go back and research. But there's a period of time where uh, the bride and groom are together and taken care of, and then by the father in law. And then later, of course, the groom will start working at his job, whatever he's to do. But for a while, a short period of time, they're taken care of by the father, father in law. So they can get to know each other. And what happens is the the father-in-law tells his son, go get your bride, and he'll get, get the bride, and they'll come back, and the, they'll have a, a ceremony that lasts seven days. And they'll go in their separate room and, and sell, you know, be together intimately. And then later, they'll, after a ceremony, and they'll come out and be with, you know, party for the seven days. So it's a feast. And that's a, that's a showing the, the rapture of the church, where Jesus comes, and God tells him when he comes and calls us up in the clouds. And uh, we go to be with, with him during the seven-year tribulation. And then we all come here to earth later after the seven-year tribulation, the week. 
John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and that ye may know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh into the, unto the Father but by me. When he talks about coming down for them, he's talking about the rapture. Now later he'll come the second coming, but I, I'm sure this is a referral to the rapture where it will be called up. So uh, we're heavenly blessed. And uh, when it talks about, the, we hear about the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, 3 through 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteous sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. We have a lot going on in our lives. And because of how we are here and how we are judged will matter where we go, heaven or hell. And heaven is a wonderful place. In Revelation 21, 3-4, and I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, be with, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. There's a lot of things I could go on and on about heaven, but I just here quickly talked about want to talk about is uh it's a personal relationship we will have with God. Any other religious beliefs on this earth, which I believe are not true, um, it's not a personal relationship. I mean, God, uh, Jesus came and, and sacrificed himself on the cross. He became man to save us. And uh, sacrificed, I, I can't even in the words the pain he suffered and he stayed on that cross he could have walked off at any time and he stayed on that cross for us and suffered and myself I don't you know there's things personally in my life I've dealt with where I've had some injuries or I've dealt with cancer and and uh, radiation I hate the radiation treatment the afterwards and different things and just to think that you could just stop that pain in an instant you know and say that I would keep going in that pain to be honest I, I'm weak I would not where, where Jesus did uh, God became man to save us uh, That's to me that's the definition of true love he loved us so much we don't have to be scared of death you know a lot of people are scared of death because they don't know and we know we were promised to be with God that's why I talk about the blessings and the beatitudes you know, that's something I have to look forward to, is to be with God. Uh, I'm, I got through, uh, I had cancer a few years ago, survived it, stage 4 cancer. I got permanent cosmic bag because of it. And the other day they did another colonoscopy. I get the honor of doing that every year. And uh, they found four polyps that they're being tested because they're very large. He thinks it was cancer again. And I'm waiting, I, I got a few days, but it, it doesn't matter. You know, when I first found out I had cancer, it was the last stages and I survived it. You know, since then, I've had three grandkids born. So, <laughs> I'm a four grandkids. So, I, I've had the privilege of uh, seeing those grandkids. And, unfortunately, my daughter has had two marriage miscarriages. So, I've got two grandkids waiting for me in heaven. Uh, plus, she also has my oldest grandson. So... There's a lot that God's given me, and, and I know that uh, at the time, I, I knew that if the odds were I weren't going to make it, I made it. 
but if I wasn't, uh, I was, I felt bad for my family, but I was excited because I finally got to be with God. And that's what I'm looking at now. I don't know yet what's going on, if it's cancer or not. I'll know in a couple of days. And, uh, well, I have a, I have to wait over a week, I guess, because that's when my next appointment with that doctor is. And, and so uh, they'll let me know if it's cancer and if I need treatment or whatever. But to me, it doesn't matter. I'm looking every day for the rapture. I believe we're in the season. And if we weren't, it, I mean, what's it mean? You know, I'm not afraid of death. I'm a combat veteran. I served uh, over 20 years in the military, 21 years, two branches of service. I did eight years in the Air Force, and I did 13 years in the Army National Guard. And during our, when I was in the infantry in the Army National Guard, I went to uh, Iraq for almost two years. And uh, we called it the Wild West back then, back in 2003. And uh, we were there a month before the war started. I survived a lot. The first two weeks, we survived 26 Scud missile attacks by platoon alone. Uh, we've lost a few people. And through the years, lost a lot many more through cancer. Um, but I've seen death. The body doesn't want to die. And the flesh flesh doesn't want to die. So I've seen people die horribly. And uh, it, it, I never was afraid of death. I just didn't want the idea of dying on flesh. You know, the pain of dying. But as for uh, you want a quick death, if you're going to, you know, if it's your time. But uh, it's something that I wasn't afraid of. I uh, have PTSD, like some, a lot of them do when we've been over there. And, and I do the counseling thing for that. And they're always worried about me wanting to commit suicide. I've had a lot of friends do that. And I don't because I don't want to be a disappointment to God saying I took my life. I'll, I'll tough it out here as long as I can. I've got a lot of financial problems. We're in this house. Like I talked in previous videos, it's been a year. And uh, the house is not done. Been fighting a construction company. I don't have the money to fight them. I've talked, they've been paid ahead, which was my mistake. I paid them ahead. On um, what the insurance company told me, I paid them ahead. And they told me to. And then when I come back and I said I shouldn't have done that, they were like, I was doing what you told me. They're like, well, that's on you. I'm like, well, I did what you said. And so then I say, well, you know, these people are defrauding you too if they're not finishing the job. And uh, insurance company don't want to mess with it. So I'm in a house with, and they don't want to even help me out because uh, a tree had fallen in the house. I redid the house. And so, like, I have no heat I'm because I have no gas, you know. There's a gas leak underneath the house. And the insurance is like, well, they waited too long to say anything about it. We're not going to replace your... Uh, help me with my my gas leak. So I, you know, I got a few. You know, that's where I'm like, I'm hoping the rapture happens soon. <laughs> I don't know how I want to get things done, paid for to get get the gas fixed to have heat in my house this winter. And on top of everything, I I got financially behind because construction company gave an end date, so the insurance stopped giving me living expenses. So expenses, so that came out of my pocket. We were living out of the hotel for long. That gets very expensive. We were living the cheapest one we could find nearby. And so that was taking my money. So I had to use credit cards to get food and stuff and different things. And, and I got behind there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in a bad situation financially right now. And I'm trying to see if I could use the house to get money uh, to get caught up on those credit cards, pay those off, and to... Because beforehand, I didn't have credit cards. And my my uh, credit score was very, very good. So I'm in a bad place financially. And I just finally had to talk with my son the other day. My wife are separated, but I still take care of my wife. Uh, there's some issues there. But as a husband, I am to provide. So I provide for a place and, and stuff and a vehicle. And, and it may get to the point where I have no vehicles. Or anything. It's just been uh, one thing after another. And I think that's spiritual warfare. It's happened to a lot of Christian people. And so just hang in there. Every day is a different day. I pray to God. If I lose things, I lose its material. Uh, that's all I have to look at it. But death is something Christians not afraid of. 
that's something you look forward to, and the world doesn't understand that. And I'm about to go into the world and about their what they have to look forward to. But as a Christian, you get to be with God in heaven, and that for me, that's that's the greatest thing. I, I so look forward to be with God in heaven, and be with other brothers and sisters in Christ. That just it helps me these dark times I got right now. It's helping me so much thinking and having faith and knowing that I'll be with them soon. The reason why a lot of people are scared to death is they don't know what happens or they, they deep inside they know and they know what's waiting for them is hell. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, adulterers, nor Idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, which means men that are uh, more feminine, uh, like homosexual, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Another example is Galatians 5.20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, Emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So if you live for the flesh, you live for your, that list I just said, and you're, you're part of that, and you're the part of the world, uh, you will have what they call death. And then later, the second death, I'll explain a little bit later what that is. Matthew 10, 28, and fear, not them to, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 25, 41, then shall be he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and angels. So hell will be, the devil and the angels will be in there with you in the future. That's where you try to spend your eternity. And, you know, we have TV where the devil's in charge telling people what to know. You'll, you'll be tormented. He'll be tormented just like you are. Mark 9, 43 for 49. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better, it is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell and into the fire that never shall be quenched where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell and fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not and the fire not quenched. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Jesus, that was Jesus speaking to the extreme that, uh, you know, it's better for you to, you know, pluck out your eye than to, to enter with both eyes, or maybe the lustful eyes or something like that, as an example, than to go to hell uh, because a worm dieth not. In other words, your body will be in torment and you're, you won't die from it because you'd have relief if you died. Instead, you'll be there eternal burning. 2 Thessalonians 1, 8-9 In flaming fire, taking revenge on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction for the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. So part of that, I mean, you're going to be in hell for those people that don't uh, follow God and seek God. You have to seek the Father. He doesn't make you followers. You have to seek Him. And basically, what's, where's your time spent? I spent a lot of time today. I did laundry. I wrote this down, and then later during the day, I wrote this down. My son's got some friends coming over. We're going to play games a little bit, but I'm and my grandson's here waiting, but I'm wanting to make this video real quick so we have time to play. So, but, uh, it was in, you know, I felt it was important to do this, but I started this today. But my time today was spent in my Bible study, and that's a daily thing for a Christian man or woman to be daily prayer in the Bible study. 
you are what your time is, you know. Spend your time, you know, it's good to have games and do stuff, but if you spend all your time uh, involved in a game or something, uh, that's where your heart is. Revelation 20.10 And the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. The beast being the Antichrist. So the Antichrist is going to wind up in hell with the false prophet along with uh, Satan. Revelation 20, 14 through 15. And death and, ha and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All Christians are written in the book of life. Those that are not written in the book of life will be eternally on fire in hell. It's horrible, but they chose not God. The next event on God's timeline before tribulation starts. So I definitely believe in the uh, pre-trib rapture. I believe there's there's so much in there uh, that talks about it, and and I've done a previous video about it. And a lot of people were like, "This is escape idea or whatever," you know. Every time something comes up. Judgment. Uh, those that are following God, those are righteous, are taken out. No one his family was taken out for the world flooded. Uh, Lot, his wife and two daughters were taken at, taken out. Sodom and, for Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Unfortunately, Lot's wife turned around because she longed, and I, I couldn't understand that as a young man. What's I mean? She longed for the lifestyle or the city. Why would? She, but. Then the more as I got older, I read it, the story again and realized he had two son-in-laws. So he had two other daughters that did not go with him. That was his unwed daughters that went. So he had two daughters that were wed, and I don't know if they had any children or not. So she longed for them. And that lets you know that we've got to let go. I have family that's dear to me. I have family that don't believe in God. The rapture takes place. I'm going to heaven. And I, and I uh, my granddaughter has a birthday party next uh, week. And so uh, she'll be a big four years old. So I'm going to, you know, try to talk to my oldest son again. <coughs> but most of the time I talk to him, he mocks God. And there's a point where it's just, a lot of times I have trouble talking to him because I just don't want to be around him. Actually, I'm not around him that much anyways. Because he just talks so bad and, and uh, uh, talks down God all the time. And tells me, he said, Dad, when you're raptured, I'll, I'll know. And I explained to him, son, it's too late. For the Gentiles, uh, that are left behind. If you heard the word of God and have not followed God before the rapture, and, and the rapture happens, and you're thinking, well, I'll, I'll be left behind, I'll follow then. No, you won't. You'll be go, given over to a great disruption. A lot of people, we, we come up with the idea that it might be an alien story, something to do with aliens, because they're pushing that agenda on us right now. But understand the aliens are demons. And I, I'll later do a video about that, explaining there's three factions. There's the reptilians, the greys, and the nords, or the Aryan race that the Nazis followed, come from, and not... I'm thinking about making that video and explaining more into that, uh, what that is and what that's about. Uh, because God shows us uh, things and, and, and uh, gives explaining because we are not to be angry at many things. You seek God, he, he will let us know. I'm not seeking man's wisdom. I, I go to my father and my father tells him what I need to know. If I don't need to know it, then I don't need to know it. I submit to God. I don't submit to men. But the tribulation is for the Jewish people. It's for bringing the Jews back to God. Plus it's a punishment in a way of the people left on this earth who decide they want their man's utopia. Well, God's going to give it to them. He is very respectful. I mean, he doesn't respect persons, but I mean, he'll do things. You want this? Okay, I'll let you have it. You know, this is what you want. So they will suffer for it. And they will curse God even though it's their fault. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. I'm going to leave on a good note. 
Like I said, the next event we're waiting for is Rapture in the Church. I believe we're in the season. I don't believe it would be next year. It can be next year, and I can be wrong. Like I said, I'm just a man, but there's too many things happening at this moment that uh, makes us think that it's it's we're in the season. You know, God says we'll not be ignorant. We'll not be like a thief in the night, thief in the night to the body of Christ, but to uh, the world. Uh, we do not know the day or hour. The date setting is is. I think uh, uh, was a uh, I can't remember if it's two three four three. Uh, Tyler, it's generation two three four three, I believe. I said I always mess up on uh, the numbers on that because my memory had memory issues on the uh, his web channel. Uh, generation two three four three by Tyler, I believe, is it. He gave the best explanation for it. it was uh. You know, he was looking at the Nile of being a high rapture date, and it's gone and passed. And like he says, he's, he's him and his wife, they've had three kids. Of course, me and my wife, I can relate. We've had three kids, too, but ours are a lot older. But uh, he talks about that. It's like when, when his wife was, was, you know, everything refers to uh, labor pains. Well, you know, she had their ultrasound. They had a date set, and then that, they were anxiously waiting for that date, and that date, uh, passed, you know, it, you know, it didn't happen on that date. Her, all, they said all three of my kids decided to come on their own time. They all were after their due date. So, and that's what we're at right now with the rapture. We know, we see the signs and we know it's coming. We're excited, but we don't know which day or hour. You know, we have high watch days like 9F, and I agree with him. That was a very high watch. Actually, I, I think I, I look at it being the whole, about a week from 9 to the 15th of, but anyways, now that people are talking about in next month the uh, uh, Feast of Trumpets being a high watch date, which I believe that's another one too. But it don't have to, I mean, especially the Feast of Trumpets. There's different things that reference the rapture, but that doesn't mean it has to happen on that time. You know, we saw in 2015 or 17, we saw a Revelation 12 sign in the sky, which is a representation of the rapture. But we're not in Revelation 12 yet. We're still in Revelation 3, about to be Revelation 4. And that's when the church is gone. So, there's signs out there. And things coming up. But I want to leave on a good note. Uh, all this talk about heaven and hell. We look for, you know, I'm excited about not dying. But the rapture doesn't, you know, rapture may happen two days from now. But tomorrow something may happen. I may be killed or a car wreck or something. You never know. I've, I've witnessed too many things in my life. Uh, too many times where, I mean, I remember one time over 20 years ago, uh, quick quick story there. I mean, it's hard to say something quick, but I was in an accident where the, the I went across railroad tracks and the arms messed up. And so they went down, went up, no lights came on, just arms. And I thought, well, it's messing up. And I, I stopped and waited. And there was a curb there. It was in town, Jacksonville, Arkansas at the time. And I didn't hear anything. And as I was driving through, the arm started coming down. So I went to swerve to miss the arm. And all of a sudden, the train hits me. I mean, right, bam, it takes my car and, and takes it, uh, you know, like the length of a block or more before it flipped it off the track. And the only, it looked like a, someone got to put a hand on either side of my car and went like this. And now, oh, I'm sorry, I have paint. I was helping my grandson do models and I got gold in one finger. And <laughs> I'm going to have to wash my hands. Right on the other, we're painting models together for first time. I'm teaching you, but uh, it was like someone had <laughs> paint on that finger too, and it just on either side of my car, I just pushed it in. And the only spot in that car was where I was sitting behind the wheel. That was it. The engine was gone. It was when I the car, I just it was just a mess. And you know, I didn't have a scratch on me. That's God. I came home at night. My wife was. Because her uh, grandmother's one of those women that has a scanner. I don't know if you know about one of them scanners, you know, in there. And they hear about, she's always getting the gossip, knowing what's going on. So she calls because I got hit by a train. They gave my name and my address. And, and so she's like, she let, let her, my wife, know that what happened. And then just a minute later, I come in the house. And she's looking at me and, you know, like, what? You know, all over me, teary-eyed, holding on to me and, and uh, I called my boss because I was on my way to work. And uh, it was at 10 o'clock at night because we rotate every uh, 
uh, two weeks at the job that I worked at that point. So uh, I called my boss and said, hey, I'm not going to make it in tonight. You know, I told him what happened. He says, you know, because I've been there almost two and a half years, and I never took time off or anything. He's like, take all the time. You, well, you know what? I might take a couple of days if that's all right. <laughs> take a couple of days, John. And that's what I did. And we just the next day we uh, uh, went out and, and then, Eight, and I just spent it with my wife and my kids, you know, just enjoyed being alive with them a little bit longer. And so, uh, which is a good thing, because at the time we had my oldest son and my, my I met my, my daughters, and then, then the two boys. So I had my daughter and my uh, one son, but we hadn't, you know, the other son was born like a year and a half later, or two years later. So anyway, so, uh, you know, I wouldn't have my other son if, you know, if I got on in that car. But the point is, too many times. I remember me and Sergeant Like in Iraq running and getting covered. We had mortar attack and RPG went right between us. Hit the berm and exploded. And two soldiers on their side got wounded. One was in the chest, one was going. We didn't get touched. Why is that? I don't know. God's in control. I mean, there's there's no reason why that didn't hit us. <coughs> Throw shrapnel on all four of us. I, I just don't know. So a lot of things happens there. Like I say, God is in control of everything, and He has a plan. And I'm just a simple man, so I don't try to uh, even compare. Even with my, my I want to be obedient, and make these videos. But even then, I'm just childlike and, and spiritual. First Thessalonians four thirteen through eighteen. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that are sorrow, not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ, I mean, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that which we are alive remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall dealt descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And that's the reason why I put that in there. We have nothing to fear of death. Uh, we belong to God. God will take care of us. You know, for anybody out there that has not given their life to Jesus Christ uh, this this will be the time to do it because the rapture is about to happen and when that happens that's it and how someone would give their life to Christ would uh, accept that they're a sinner and believe in Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins that he was a perfect sacrifice we could not ever be and that his blood sacrifice his blood covenant covered our past present and future sins and as long as we are repentant and remorseful of what we've done in our heart, and that would mean not to go back sinning, you know, not to uh, go back to the ways of the world, but to be the salt in this world and to be obedient to God and to look for God and search for God and to study His Word daily and pray daily and make God the focus of our life then we know that we will be going through Christ, which is the only way to heaven. There is not many ways to heaven. And not no matter what the world tells you, that, that you know, all these different people that are trying to push on you, that we all know God in a different way, that is not true. There is only one way to know God, and that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Not Muhammad, Buddha, and all these others that they add in there. They, they're, they're not going to heaven. Allah is not God. Allah is Satan. And so uh, we don't have to be afraid of death because uh, Jesus Christ conquered death on the cross. As it says, death, where is thy sting? And because of that, we can, we can live, look forward to, have the hope and look forward to a better future. Here on earth, I'm having all kinds of health problems, and financial problems, and this and that, and just trying to make it day by day. But I know that there's God in heaven waiting for me. And what I have in heaven waiting for me is nothing here, you know, on this earth. 
And I'm so thankful and grateful for the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has done for me. And that in itself drives me to try my best to be a good Christian, to be Christ-like, and let God in my heart and myself, because the Holy Spirit indwells you the moment you give your life to God. You know, some churches will be, uh, you know, Holy Spirit speaking in tongues as a sign and different things like that. I think there's misteachings on that, and I've talked about that in a previous video. And then I redid the video again because I wanted to uh, be correct in my teachings uh, because I'm, I'll be responsible for if I say something wrong to somebody. Uh, there's accountability. And so, God bless you, and I hope this motivates you to study the Word of God. That's the reason for these videos is to talk about God and to motivate others to study His Word. And I need to get this paint taken care of. God bless you.